These days, it's my impression that most people would agree that they'd prefer to work on software with good automated tests than not. There are some people out there still who find objections to this. We'd like to do it, but ours is a special case. But they're wrong. Even so, I think that even these people would prefer it if they could see the results of their changes in a few minutes rather than the more normal few, few weeks or months that you get if your releases are dependent on manual regression testing. Of course there are some teams that don't test their software at all before releasing, but there's no accounting for psychopaths. So the problem isn't really should we automate testing, it's more how should we automate testing. So that's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. We've been producing content here now for nearly three years and we've released over 250 videos. I hope that you've enjoyed some of them. The channel has significantly exceeded our original expectations in its growth, but it would mean a lot to me if you could help us to reach even more people by sparing a second or two to register your support. So if you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. And if you are already a, a subscriber, then thank you. But please do check that you've also clicked on the bell notification icon so that YouTube will keep you informed when we release new content. And finally, if you enjoy the video today, hit like as well. I was talking to a client recently and we ended up having a replay of a conversation that I've had many times before. They said, we'd like to improve our game at testing. We find it hard to get automated testing right, so we end up relying way too much on manual testing because it seems easier. Maybe we should start TDD or BDD. Where do you think we should begin? These are good questions. Reducing the reliance on slow, expensive, unpredictable manual testing is perhaps one of the most consequential changes that you can make to your development process. The problem here though is that the ideal answer is that you need both fine-grained test-driven development and the more specification-focused process of behaviour-driven development to do the best job of this. I am certainly guilty of standing up this ideal picture as the goal sometimes because I think it is really the goal, but practically you're not going to be able to achieve that in a single giant leap. So where should you begin to improve your automated testing approach? I've said here many times before that I think that test-driven development is an immensely valuable tool in software development. It gives us the fastest, clearest feedback on the design of our systems that we can get. And as a side effect of organising our work this way, by always starting from a test, we also end up with lots of tests that are nicely decoupled from our code, so don't break too easily when the implementation detail changes, meaning that we can run them all to confirm that our code still works when we change it. Let me pause there and say thanks to our sponsors. We are sponsored here by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic and are very fortunate. All of these companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, please do click on their links in the description below. The value of test-driven development is not to be dismissed lightly and I think is one of the most valuable tools to help us build great software. If you want to increase your skills as an individual developer, I'd really seriously recommend that you learn test-driven development. But if you want to increase your effectiveness as an organisation or team, test-driven development is not the easiest place to begin. The problem is that test-driven development while it does have a big impact on the quality of our designs, that means that code written with test-driven development looks different. It's better. The problem is that with this, it means that if you want to retrofit test-driven development to existing code, that code is almost certainly going to be the wrong shape. So adding TDD is a complicated, disruptive thing to do at this stage. So in general, I don't recommend it as a starting point. It's much easier to adopt test-driven development for new code rather than trying to force-fit it back onto old code. There are techniques that can help you to get old code into a better, more testable shape. Take a look at my free tutorial on refactoring for some advice. But this is always a long, slow process, and to be honest, you're never going to end up with a beautiful, wonderfully easy-to-maintain system this way. It will just be better than it was before. I recommend that every developer learns the skills of TDD. I think it will make you a better developer whatever your skill level. I've got a free tutorial for that too.
But most of us are not starting out with a blank sheet. We are in organisations with histories surrounded by software that wasn't built in this way and so is already the wrong shape. So what do we do now? Well, step one is that if you are starting on a brand new project, start off full bore with continuous delivery, test driven development, continuous integration, behavior driven development, deployment pipelines, the lot from day one. This is the easiest time to adopt these new, more effective practices while your code is still in its simplest possible state in that it doesn't even exist yet. Start new things as you mean to go on, full blown continuous delivery. Here's a video uh, on how to start a project like that. For the rest of us though, I think that behavior driven development, also known as acceptance test driven development, is most often the more effective starting point to introduce better uh, automated testing to our projects. BDD is an easier retrofit to existing code. I've known teams to adopt it for ancient legacy mainframe systems, as well as large complex code bases written with more modern technologies, and lots of other projects of all shapes and sizes and technology mixes too. My view is that as long as you can fake some inputs to a system and collect some outputs from it, you can test pretty much everything that you need to. We'll talk about the tricky bits later. Think of this approach in terms of eliminating your dependence on manual regression testing rather than on aiming for some form of testing perfection. Aim for something more practical, good enough testing that you can run all of the time. Our goal with automated testing is not to be perfect and to test everything. It's to replace the need for humans doing regression testing. So we only need to be good, as good as they were to be gaining an advantage. Because once what they were doing is automated as a test, we can run those tests as many times as we like. So we'll get faster feedback on problems than any army of humans could ever possibly deliver. And our tests will be more repeatable too, because we can simply rerun them whenever we need to. Computers are good at being repetitive, people aren't. So start your journey to better testing by learning how you determine the releasability of your software now, and then use the techniques of acceptance test driven development and BDD to build a domain specific language that makes it easy for you to script scenarios for the behaviors of your system. Start with a simple evaluation of some core behavior of your system that would tell you that the system's simply up and running correctly and build this first version of your DSL around that scenario. To achieve this, you'll need to automate the deployment of the system. But once again, this step is a significant one on the journey to gaining more stability and control overall. The test cases themselves should only describe what the system does, not how it does it. I describe this approach in more detail in this video. Once you have this first scenario up and running, add more, all the time growing the capabilities of your DSL along the way, with the aim of being able to capture scenarios of use of the system easily and quickly. These are your test cases. Learn from whoever currently determines the releasability of your system and use what they do as a guide to finding useful scenarios. Get these people involved in helping you to define what you need to test to determine releasability. But do be cautious of getting too lost in implementation detail. It's quite common for people that are focused on testing to think in terms of com complete this form and push this button rather than what you are really interested in, the user needs to try and achieve this goal. If you follow this approach, very quickly you'll find that you get to a stage when most scenarios that you can think of are already supported by the DSL. So now they are very easy to write indeed. As you discover new areas of functionality that the DSL doesn't yet support, use the four layer approach to add them in a way that maintains a clean separation of concerns that keeps your test cases independent of the implementation details of your system. I tend to play a little game whenever I'm writing a test case and I ask myself, does my system express what my system does in a way that I can imagine completely replacing my existing system with a, a wholly different one based on entirely different technologies? If we're building a web-based system, I imagine changing it to work via voice control or thought control instead, without needing to change the test scripts at all. Obviously, I'm going to need to change the lower layers in my four layer approach, because the protocol drivers are the place that know how the actual system works. But the rest is focused on what the system does, not how it works, which means that the rest should remain the same, whatever the nature of the technology. 
If I can write my test case like that, then I've achieved the right level of abstraction. If not, my tests are already too tightly coupled to the implementation detail of the system and therefore will break more easily. This is an exceedingly effective and high value step because now it's simple to capture the scenarios that my system supports. And as soon as you have these tests written, you can start running them all of the time. So getting much faster and more effective feedback into the development process. The biggest technical barrier here is usually down to problems of repeatability in the tests. If you don't accurately and effectively control the variables for your system under test, you may get different results each time you run the same test. But if that's the case, then the same is true if you're doing manual testing. You'll get different results every time you run the test. The slight advantage that manual testing has, if that's the correct word, is that you've got smart humans interpreting the results. They can judge the differences uh, after each run and make a subjective decision on whether the system's now releasable or not. People are certainly currently better than machines at these sorts of subjective guesses, but they are still guesses. Our aim is to move beyond guessing though and exert enough control to make more objective calls on the state of systems releasability. So use the creation of these acceptance tests as a platform on which to build to increase the determinism of the system as a whole. Use infrastructure as code techniques to version control and deploy the system. Build tests and test domain specific language to support getting the system more accurately into a well controlled state as part of the setup of each test. I describe several more techniques of how to better control the variables and avoid flaky tests in this video. This approach is much more achievable in practice than I think most people believe. I'm going to make an extravagant claim. But even if this was only slightly true, it would still be worth the try. It's my belief that once you have the bare bones of an acceptance testing DSL in place, the work of only a few days for most systems, then for approximately the same amount of time it takes you to do the manual testing once, maybe twice, you can replace the manual testing with automated tests. If you'd like to learn more about this approach, I have a free guide for that too. Check this out, that out in the links. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'd also like to say thank you to all of our patrons for their support. And if you'd like to become a Patreon member, there's links for that in the description below too. Thanks again and bye-bye.